Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another tutorial here on Glass Hand. Uh, lately I've been doing a lot of hologram stuff for clients, so I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and share a video that was similar to what I've been doing. Um, so I want to share some tips with you guys. We're going to look at the hologram, maybe some MoGraph stuff, and then jump into After Effects. And I'm going to show you how to composite the different layers that we're going to get from Octane in Cinema 4D. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and check out our project. So this is a file that I was working on. Um, and you know it's kind of it's kind of more mography. It's got like these different uh, triangles, and we have them in like a different sphere format that's just being cloned. And then we have some more of these uh, tendril-looking shapes, and then we just have some simple uh, sweeped lines that are just kind of coming out of it and doing some cool things. So um, right now, I don't believe it is animated. Nope, it's just static, but we're going to recreate this project together. Uh, we're going to take a look at how we can set up different material types, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and just create a new project. Um, first thing I want to do is just drop in a simple polygon. Okay, so something like this. Uh, we'll change the orientation to, let's just um, say, negative Z. And then we can change it to a triangle. And from here, uh, we can change our viewport so we can see the lines and will collapse. So we'll grab the polygon face here and hit MW to actually do an extrude enter. And then we can use, um, we just hit the delete key and then we can use UL and we can grab a loop selection and MT to extrude this out, okay? Um, and then to fill the hole, we'll hit MD and uh, we can actually use that to fill uh, sorry, actually, let's just go ahead and bridge these. Um, it'll be a lot better than actually filling. So we'll just hit M and B and make sure we're in uh, the line component type. And we'll just click and drag and create these different um, polygons here. MD to go ahead and fill that last one. All right, so this is the first shape that we have. And we're going to put this into a cloner. So we're going to hold Alt and uh, choose cloner. And that makes it a child. And then we'll choose the mode to object. Um, what that's going to do is allow us to put an object into our scene and have our shape be uh, cloned across it. So it, we're just going to use a simple sphere. And then we're going to drag that into our object. Immediately we get those triangles cloned onto the sphere. So we're going to change some settings here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, change the, uh, instead of, vertex we're going to put it to surface and we can put our up vector to uh, positive z how we first created and now let's just change our count type and we're going to also change the size of these guys so we just scaled them down and then we can just put them like so uh, so we can do some other things to this uh, first of all, let's go ahead and check on render instances for Octane. It'll uh, help us save on VRAM. Um, we can do things like add a selection uh, once we get a selection tag from the sphere so that they would only show up on a certain side of the object. But I think for now, we'll just, um, sorry, we'll go ahead and collapse the sphere and we can just hide it. So this will be kind of the main uh, portion and we can just keep figuring out how many clones we want. Instead of surface, let's just try, let's just do vert vertice, and then to make them um, appear more random, we'll just add a random effector. So with our cloner selected, we can go and add a random selection, and then and we won't push it out on the Z. And then we can change these values to be pretty small add some rotation let's change that in the B it looks like so we'll put that at like 360 and we can also change um, our random effector to like a sphere and then as it's like maybe on one portion you can you know animate these um, to get 
a cool type of effect of it kind of spinning and doing some other different things. So that's one way we could uh, create this kind of shape, but we can also use something uh, like an octane scatter, and this will allow us to do a little bit more. So if we just copy the polygon and we'll just shut off the cloner, um, we can come into the octane scatter, make the surface being the sphere, and then you can see how that shows up. Let's just go ahead and hide the uh, effector so it's not in our way. And then we can just say that instead of uh, vertices, we want it to be on the surface. And then we have this keep away um, function, which won't allow them to touch or overlap. So that's kind of cool to go ahead and have. Uh, and then we can have a lot more of the count. So to be able to see this, we have to have our um, Octane Viewer. And let's go ahead and just put a texture environment in there so we can see it. And then we do not want the... Um, we do not want the sphere to render. Okay, so we can zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so you can see that they're kind of pointing out and instead we would actually like them to lay on the surface. So let's just, um, with our access tool, let's go ahead and rotate this down uh, 90 degrees so that they lay onto that sphere. Uh, with the octane scatter, we can also use effectors so we can come over here and grab a uh, MoGraph effector and we could do, we act, sorry, we actually still have our random effector. We can just drop it in here and let's just change the parameters just a bit. Um, it doesn't look like we need to rotate it on the B anymore. We need to rotate it, looks like on the H. Okay, so yeah, I think you guys get the idea of how you can kind of uh, play with this a little bit more. I'm going to actually change the scale of these um, to a uniform type scale and then bring this down so that some of them are larger than others. And uh, it works really fast. I, I, I like using the Octane Scatter a lot. Um, and, we, you know, we can really bring up the count if we want. Uh, but let's go ahead and change it to something like, I don't know, uh, maybe 500. Let's go ahead and set up a camera in our shot as well so that we can get this framed how we want. I'm going to switch my mode. Um, I have this octane layout and let's go ahead and just position ourselves how we want to frame this up. So let's come over here to our coordinates and let's zero everything out except for the Z because we want our camera to still be kind of far back. So if you're following along, we could do like negative 800. Probably want to bring that back a little bit more. Let's get rid of our cloner since we're not going to be using that. Let's just keep using the octane scatter. Uh, and we can call this uh, something like large poly scatter. And then we could uh, duplicate this and grab our sphere and let's call this uh, big sphere and then we can make another one that is the little sphere let's scale that down and we can just put that into our new scatter object so let's call this small and drag in our surface okay so let's grab the little sphere shrink it and then the polygon here we can shrink that as well so they're tinier okay so I think that will do that for the first part uh, in the next lesson let's go ahead and just um, start adding some more elements we're gonna add some of the straight lines that you saw and uh, we can start doing some uh, animation later on once we get some more things built out. So thanks a lot, guys, for uh, checking this one out. And uh, definitely stick around for the other ones because it will be really fun to take this into After Effects and start compositing it. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.